Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. We'll be starting shortly. We're just waiting for a few more attendees to uh, come into the webinar. Good morning everyone, we'll be starting in one minute. Good morning, everyone, and welcome uh, to this uh, Ingram Micro Series of Teams Practice Building Webinars. This is the first in the series of three that will be held every Wednesday at this time. My name is George Farrell, and I'm the BDM for the Modern Workplace Practice at Ingram Micro based in Sydney. Uh, this webinar is running on Microsoft Teams live events, and please note that this session is being recorded. Uh, this recording will be available and sent to all those who have registered. We'll be taking questions, uh, obviously time permitting, uh, which you can type into the Q&A panel. Today is Wednesday, May 12, and we're coming to you from the Ingram Micro Office in one of our team's meeting rooms. Our speakers today, um, uh, we have two excellent speakers, uh, both from Ingram Micro. Uh, Abby Hansen is the first speaker and Abby is the Senior Solutions Sales Executive uh, for Microsoft Collaboration and Secure Teamwork at Ingram Micro Cloud US. Uh, she works with our partners to build out their team's practice. She's a former program lead for the, micro, for the Microsoft Modern Workplace Practice and brings a wealth of expertise to our team's business. Um, so I'll hand it over to Abby now to begin her presentation. Thanks, Abby. You're on mute. Great. You <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Let me go ahead and just share my monitor. Go ahead. Wonderful. Is that showing up okay? We're just waiting to see that. There it's coming. There you go. Perfect. Thank you for the wonderful introduction. Again, I'm Abby Hansen. It is um, yesterday today for you. Um, it's actually my eight o'clock at night in the evening, and it is such an honor and pleasure to be with you here this evening. Um, today, I'm going to go ahead and talk to you a little bit about how to build a Microsoft Teams practice and what is all included as we build out this practice. Some of the numbers that you are going to see will include numbers in US, um, but hopefully it'll give you a vision for where you're able to take your practice. And so again, just a little bit about myself. You're gonna get this deck when it's over. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn as well, as I'm always sharing out tips and tricks when it comes to Microsoft Teams. So as we dive into Microsoft Teams, we know that it is a place for us to collaborate, chat, 
talk on the phone, have meetings, and really have a rich experience. And we've seen that multiple SMBs, they're quick to pivot. Customers needed to move fast. And when the pandemic hit, we have seen an abundance of video conferencing and telephony really take off. Um, we see that 76% are adapting and enabling remote work. And this was even before the pandemic had started. One of the statistics that I like to throw out there, and it may even be relevant to Australia, is that 50% of the United States right now is working from home. And so when we think about the magnitude of that, it also shows us the opportunity to be able to collaborate across the board. And so another thing that I want you all to think about as well is that there are a lot of brick and mortar buildings, especially in the United States, that are closing down because they've figured out how to work from home, how to save money, and actually how to build additional revenue within their companies. And so this is also an opportunity for us to help our customers grow. We've also seen a huge surge in video collaboration from Zoom to Cisco to Microsoft Teams. And a couple of things that I've learned from here is that a lot of our customers do what's called decentralized purchasing, meaning that a lot of different areas of the business don't know what they're purchasing. And at times they're actually spending more than they need to, when in turn, Microsoft Teams can help them reduce spend. We've also seen a huge growth within security. So just some things to think about from that perspective. Now, as we look at this slide here, there are a lot of challenges when it comes to secure remote work. Disjointed collaboration and file sharing. I work with partners and customers all the time that they don't even know where some of the stuff is located. Or I was working with a marketing company the other day with a partner, and they had told me that they actually let their employees use their own file sharing, whether it be Dropbox, Google, their own personal OneDrive, and they're storing their company documents in those sharing capabilities. Now, this is a huge risk when you think about it um, because they're gonna be able to bring in unwanted malware, um, links, maybe things like that that aren't appropriate. But on the flip turn of it, they're allowing their employees to save the work they're doing for their company back to those files. And so they're essentially learning, losing revenue if they were to leave the company. We're also seeing that online meeting experiences have been less than ideal. They haven't been secure. They haven't been encrypted. They've been hacked. Um, I can honestly say that I have never heard of a Microsoft Teams being hacked, but some other platforms that have been in the news have been. Um, we also see that it's difficult to collaborate with external parties, being file sharing, being able to be in one location at one time. And that there's also a ton of concerns around security and manageability. Now, these are, you can use these challenges of secure remote work in a couple ways. Take each one of these and do a marketing on each one. Get your customers to think differently. Or if you're part of your sales team, actually turn those into questions to drive a deeper conversation. Now, when we enable remote work with Microsoft Teams, we know that we can do real-time teamwork with communication, collaboration. We can do online meetings from anywhere. When I first interviewed for this job over a year and a half ago, I interviewed in Africa. I was on my cell phone in a third world country. I can um, do Microsoft Teams on my iPad, the Surface Hub behind me. I'm really able to do my work anytime, anywhere. We know that we're able to ex um, engage with customers and suppliers to chat, meet and call. I have a Microsoft Teams partner site here in Ingram with all of my US-based partners, and they're all part of that so that we're able to collaborate more effectively together. And then security. Teams is built on security we can trust. Microsoft spends over a billion dollars per year to ensure that their security is top in class. So how do we look at the partner opportunity? When we look at teamwork, we, there is a potential for about $44 US per user per month. And we break that down, you can see that there's an additional attach of $11.45, depending upon what you're adding into the equation. 
when we build it out a little bit more, if you're adding in line of business applications, telephony, there's a ton more that you can bring to the table. We're seeing that our partners across the globe are investing in teamwork and as a way to provide more value to customers. You're becoming stickier and you're helping to differentiate yourselves. We're going to dive into the how in a moment. Partners are also finding success in selling advisory and adoption services. This is actually what makes you more sticky as a partner, and we'll talk about that in a moment. And then on top of that, we want to make sure that your managed services are still present. Here in the US, my goal is to drive between five to nine different service offerings with our partners. If I can't do that, then I failed, right? I want to make sure that you have a really strong go-to-market strategy. So where does the money come from? So when we're looking at the partner revenue opportunity for Microsoft, we're really looking at that Microsoft 365 business premium SKU. That's $20 US. And through this top opportunity, you're, own, you're going to get revenue on the CSP margin. You're also going to get CSP incentives on new customers on those premium SKUs. Also, when you think about that premium SKU, it's important to know that it includes security. So you're really going to be able to drive that secure collaboration conversation as well. And I'm just checking in to see if we have any questions yet. All right, perfect. So the next part that we want to talk about is deployment. We're seeing on average in the US per Forester about $9 per user per month. This is going to include your team's deployment and integration, security assessments, implementation, and on-prem to cloud workloads. You also need to fit in there your email migration. If email isn't in the cloud or in a hybrid scenario, Teams isn't going to give you the full functionality that you need. Then the advisory and adoption services is about an additional $5 US. It includes light governance with IT organizations, integrated voice and collaboration solutions, and delivering end user training. Then when we get to those business solutions, this is when you're really making it as a partner. You're bringing in line of business applications. You're bringing in bots. You're really showing the partner or the customer how you can help them become more effective by streamlining business processes. Um, and then of course, on the end with your managed services. Now some key insights. Voice is becoming a much larger opportunity for non-specialized partners. I know in Australia that you're unable to use the Microsoft Teams voice platform. You use a third party, but there's still an opportunity there for you. Partners are having more success with advisory and adoption services. If you don't have an adoption and change management program in play, even from a security standpoint, it's a good time to look at it. We also know that Teams and modern device management is offering a bunch to our customers. So when we think about Teams, we're not just selling a SKU. We're selling a platform in the way we do business, which includes security, it includes collaboration, but we're also looking at devices. We're looking at meeting rooms. We're looking at telephony, and we're really diving into the way that our customers do business. And then we're seeing that a lot of MSPs are moving to SOC as a service. Now, we know it's an integrated solution for SMBs. It's one workplace, as you can see here, with quick access to calls, files, chats, meetings, and apps, all in one single workplace. But what's even cooler about it is that we're helping our customers reduce spend. And in a pandemic, this is even more important than ever. We're seeing a lot of customers move to the CSP methodology for purchasing licensing. They're able to reduce spend on third-party applications. You can see here in this example, when we have third-party applications on average, a customer is spending $31 US with emailed and shared calendar, online meetings and chat, and file storage. Whereas Microsoft Business Premium is just $20 US. So you're able to save that customer $11 per month. 
not even including those third-party security solutions that could be replaced by business premium. So you're really setting that customer up for success. You're thinking about their growth because they're going to be able to use that money in order to invest in their company. And then, of course, the simplified IT management. On this section, everything is in one location for all of those Microsoft tools. Now, this is the part where I get goosebumps because I remember pre-pandemic, there was only about 9 million daily active users. So in that time frame, we have grown to over 145 million daily active users per April's report from Microsoft. We're in over 181 markets, 44 languages are supported, 200 daily meeting participants, and over 4.1 billion meeting minutes. Now this is astronomical. When we break it down even further, we know through studies that Microsoft Teams on average can save a person an hour per day if they're fully deployed on Teams. Now, if you're talking to a CFO, you can have this conversation with them. You can talk to them and say, you know, Microsoft Teams can get back an hour per day, Mr. Customer. You have 100 employees. That's 100 hours per day 500 hours per week, and 2,000 hours per month. What could you do with that time to help your company grow? And a whole different conversation is going to happen with your customer. They're going to start thinking about how they can collaborate more effectively and really make their business more active and grow. So where do we start? We're now into the nitty gritty. If you're thinking about starting a team's practice, we need to start with the team's basic. And so what we want to think about here from a teamwork basic scenario is really first to migrate. We want to help SMBs start their journey in the cloud through migrating email, files, and identity. This is numero uno, number one, first thing you have to do. I was working with a partner and a customer from an adoption and change management strategy, and their email wasn't even deployed yet. But yet the CEO was like, well, I need this app and I need this app. And I said, you know, we actually have to take a step back because you're not going to get the full functionality. I get it. You're super excited, but we want you to use it the right way. And so know that that has to happen first. The next thing that we need to do is standardize the organization on teams for collaboration. Looking at their files, what's going to be moved to channels? That's going to be a lot of road mapping session understanding their departments, knowing what needs to move. So a lot of things behind the scenes will happen there. And then you're going to integrate other Microsoft services into that team's experience. Then we're going to drive into adoption and change management. And an ACM um, program is key to success. Some of the first things that we look at is really onboarding by offering in-person workshops to get familiar with Teams and transition from email. Engagement, create digital learning paths for end users with on-demand training resources. And for these two, you wanna make sure you're not overloading your customer. You wanna make sure first you give them some online training, some snackable videos that they're able to watch, which Microsoft Teams app on the desktop actually includes for you in the bottom left-hand corner under help. Then you want to get a feel. Maybe you go in first and you're driving the conversation with email and chat or chat and meetings. Then you create digital learning paths. Some of my top partners in the United States do 30 minute coffee talks once a month for the whole company. First 15 minutes is all about Microsoft Teams. What's new? We're going to teach you a new skill. And then the next 15 minutes is about how to answer their questions, bring up any concerns, and people are learning off of each other. And then the last part for adoption and change management is tracking. You need to make sure that you're tracking and agreeing on metrics and looking at those on a weekly basis. And you're saying a weekly basis, that's a lot. But when you first start in that first six months, if you do a Friday check-in every week, and Sally, Jack, and Henry aren't using chat, you want to make sure and understand why. Do they not need it for their job? 
Do they not know how to use it? Do they need more training? And then you go back the next week and you help those users because we don't want people to get frustrated. We want them to use the application. And there's so much more when it comes to ACM, but this is just a kickoff. The other part as well is meetings management. Now, there's a lot of fun things there. How to train to have an effective meeting, how to use the different tools within the meeting. But we also want to conduct an assessment to determine the user's needs for meeting solutions. Do they need that additional add-on conference bridge phone number to be effective? Do you want to add on those Teams certified devices and Teams rooms for a seamless experience? And how do we monetize with it with meetings management? Looking at these Teams custom solutions, this is when you're almost there as a partner. You're so sticky that customer is going to say, I am never leaving you because you've improved my environment because you built this for them. So really looking at product productivity solutions using the app gallery making line of business experiences into Teams and building low code solutions. The key here is Microsoft already offers free applications for you for Flow. You can put it into your customer's environment. And I always like to quote Walt Disney, basically, if you can dream it, you can do it with Microsoft Teams. I worked with a company that's a, a truck driving company. They deliver goods to a local convenience store. And previously, the truck drivers would drop off the product at the store. They would write it down on paper. They would have the people at the front desk sign the paper. Yes, the product has been delivered. And then they would drive back, bring it to finance. Finance would enter everything into the computer and the billing would get out within 35 to 45 days. Through the power of Teams, we were able to help that customer build a workflow through Teams, got all of the users on the first line worker SKU on their phones, they drop off the product into the cooler, they scan the barcode, they go up to the front desk, they digitally sign, they push a button and it goes back to headquarters. Billing was cut down to five days. Customers happy, payment goes out quicker and business doesn't stop. Microsoft Teams can make it happen. <laughs> Here's some more examples from a Teams custom solution as well. Um, you can just see like the inventory bots and the picture, re um, the picture review apps as well. So when we bring it together, we're driving profit with Teams. Again, this is all US, but you can see the magnitude. When we win the foundation with email migration, we're setting up those users on Office 365 with 24 seven support. We are about 180 US. When you start to attach services, like migrating files to OneDrive, establishing meetings on Teams, package meeting room services, and bundling adoption services with support, it's about additional 310. When you deepen it, it's 115. So we're standardizing on collaboration, we're customizing line of business and telephony. So here's some things to think about. Here's how you're successful. You want to make sure you're creating a strong go to market motion with Microsoft and Ingram Micro as your partner. We have a ton of collateral for teams in our marketplace. We know we never want to talk about Microsoft Teams now as a product. We want to change the way we speak about it. Teams is a platform. It is the way we do business. If we can change our mindset, people are going to want to be a part of it. We're going to want to focus on usage. Usage drives stickiness. That customer is never going to want to leave your side. Employee training is crucial, and then you can build security ops and DevOps capabilities on top of it. So how do we acquire it? We really want to target our audience. Right now is the end of Microsoft's fiscal. You have the ability now to really drive in and drive home that year end revenue. Look at exchange online customers you have that are ready for upsell. Customers that are on prem, they're great candidates. Ton of SMBs across the globe are still not on cloud services. We had some end of support happening. Great time to drive that business premium conversation. We also have conversation starters here that you can look into further when this comes out to you, such as unsecured file sharing, version control, 
And then how do we actually go after new customers? There's a CSP trial, there's the teamwork workshop, and then there's sales and marketing plays. Now, I wanna show you something quick. And what I like to use is actually come up here. I'm gonna put the link in the window so you can go ahead and share this out. And all partners across the globe should have access to it. And it's called transform.microsoft.com. And it talks about the free trial. The free trial is great, but what I like to do is actually come into this customer digital experience. And in the customer digital experience, there are a ton of demos here that are ready to go for you. You can go in, download it, get PowerPoints on any Microsoft product that's available. The other really cool thing is called My Environments. Now, if you really want your customers to go in and pay, play, play to break, you can do that. Come in here, create a tenant. There's a ton of them for different industries. Give them these credentials and send them to office.com. Tell them they have 15 days to go into the admin portal or into the other application and play. They're gonna be able to go in there, explore it, see if they like it, and then you don't need to go in and have something done with their tenant. You're actually driving a quicker close to sale because normally those trials are six months. Give them 15 days and see if you can advance the sale. If you can't, then maybe go to the trial. But this is a great way that we're moving the needle here in the US, okay? The other one that I wanted to show you as part of transform.microsoft.com as well are the workshops. So if you can't have or are unfamiliar on how to actually have a conversation with a customer, you can come down to this business workshop tool. I'm gonna just put this link in the window so everybody has it there as well. And when you come down below, you can click, let's get started. You can choose this assessment's not for a customer. You can choose your geography, which is Australia. You can choose your industry. And then over here, you can either do one of two, help me choose a solution, which will lead you through the total conversation with your customer or start a workshop. When I click start a workshop, and we're gonna talk about this with Business Voice, you can do a secure from anywhere or a Business Voice conversation. And I'll show you this now, just cause we're gonna get to it in a minute. But this Business Voice, it's not available in Australia. So let's do the secure work from everywhere. It's going to lead you through the conversation for Teams. Everything is here. As you ask the questions, when you get to the end, it's going to make a recommendation for you. You can download the PowerPoint, it's all ready to go for you. Um, tell the customer that you have a lot of great information, schedule a meeting two days out, even though your work's already done for you, slap your logo on it, and you can go back with your recommendation for the customer, okay? This is life-changing, I kid you not. Um, and the other one here, just because we're with you all right now, can you tell I'm a little passionate? Um, but when we come in here, this customer content assembler, I actually worked on this with this team when I worked at Microsoft. You can actually come in here and create any presentation for Microsoft on any product, starter packs, presentations, proposals. When you click in here, you put in your file name, your language, I'm gonna say it's not for a customer and click next. And you have all of these presentations with what to say to present in front of your customer, okay? So it's a beautiful thing for you to be able to activate. All right, now that I got off track a little bit, but super excited, it's valuable for you. And go back into slideshow mode. All right, so building a voice practice. Again, in Australia, I know that you have to use a third party, but it's so important for you to kind of understand the methodology. Here in the US, we have so many customers that are still on-prem and they're not back at the office. So they're having to transfer phone calls to their cell phones. Companies are having to pay a cell phone stipend. And so actually their costs have gone up. So it's a great time to target those customers to get them to move into Teams. We know that we can stay essential in real time. Microsoft Teams includes audio conferencing, online meetings, instant messaging. You can see it, they're all up here on the screen. Staying connected is important. 
So when you build a team's practice, you want to make sure you're defining your strategy. You're looking at your capabilities and you're really operationalizing. So here, when you get this deck, I would encourage you to click on these links. Look at your market landscape. Look at your product vision, service categories, and key stakeholders. It's going to drive everything there for you. And you can rebrand it. You can put your logo on it from your partner. That's what Microsoft wants you to do. They want it um, scalable and repeatable. Then you develop your sales and technical readiness plan. You look at your Microsoft Teams associate certificate. If you haven't thought about the Microsoft 700 course, that is the perfect one for you to enable Microsoft Teams. Then the next one is the resource hub. Now this voice hub is right here. I'm gonna come over here and I'll put this one in the window for you. You can tell it's getting darker here as everything's starting to set. But here you're gonna have everything around what Microsoft Voice is. If you can learn how to port numbers, set up auto attendance. So everything is going to be here for you to help you be successful. Okay. We already went through the Business Voice Workshop and I know I'm not sharing my screen in its entirety, so I'll go ahead and do that again. So you have your Business Voice trial, which probably isn't relevant in Australia. Um, but then you also have all of these presentations that are available for you as, uh, as well. It's important to note that Skype for Business is going away July 2021. We're only a couple months out, so it's a great target for you. All of these are pitch decks, chart your journey, upgrade planning workshops. So there's a ton of information that you too can use to help migrate your customers. So when we think about it from a voice perspective, we wanna make sure we're enabling, we're planning, we're deploying, and we're adopting. There's a ton of additional partner resources here for you that the team is going to send out after the call as well. Getting started, here's the link to the tool that I showed you. You have your adoption hub, and here's a lot more on Business Voice. So we're wrapping it together. We're building our team's practice by first adoption. We have to sell Microsoft 365, include that security all day long. You got to do your cloud migration, standardize for collab, move files, set up policies, one time and ongoing adoption services. You do that, your services revenue is going to be here. You add on your meeting services, you're growing. You add on telephony, you're going to have made it. All right. This even shows you where your partner logo can go in if you talk to customers. You can see Microsoft Teamwork really helps us from that perspective. All right, that is all I have for you all. Are there any questions that have come in? Yeah, Abby, um, quick question regarding, you mentioned uh, Power Apps before. What are some of the most popular sort of integrations that you've seen um, that you know, other applications integrating with Teams that have had a real impact for customers. Oh my gosh, like, this thing, can I just show you what Ingram, you guys all have this too, but Ingram just put this into play. And so I got so excited the other day and totally geeked out because that's what I do. But you can see we have this IMA bot. It's a virtual assistant. And here we are now able to communicate directly in Teams through this bot directly to our services department. Now imagine doing that as a partner. <coughs> You've built a bot, you put it in your customer's environment and it goes directly to your knock, to your help desk. You're able to help your customers that much more quickly. Cool. Yeah. Plus there's a, go ahead. Yeah, go on. There's a ton of applications too, right? When you think about it. And so there's the shifts app, there's tasks and planner, there's approval. So if you actually come down here to the app section, there's over 880 certified apps that have been developed to help you become more effective and efficient. So when you're looking at moving things to the cloud, really look at your customer's applications that, that are, might already be present in Teams as well. Sure. And you um, can here too. Yeah, right. go ahead. And the question around SharePoint versus Teams, it's a question we get a lot. Yeah. Um, are you seeing that we're basically moving everything into Teams now? It is, and you know, for the general user, Teams, you know, Teams is built on SharePoint. 
So mm -hmm. anything that goes into Teams and channels has a SharePoint backend. Um, and you also have OneDrive. So your OneDrive is still connected into Teams as well. So when you do chat, that's actually saved in OneDrive versus SharePoint. Um, right. And so when you're doing the configuration, it's still important to have that SharePoint and OneDrive knowledge as an engineering perspective to get that set up. And one final question in terms of sort of mapping, you know, people have things stored still in folders. Um, you talked earlier about some adoption services, but is that something that partners can do? Sit with their customers. Does Microsoft have resources to help partners um, create channels from the data or is it something that you would normally engage a, an external third party? No, partners can do it all day long. And so a way, a couple of different ways that you're able to do it is create a Microsoft form. It takes 30 seconds to do forms.microsoft.com. And from there, you can send out a survey to every department. So maybe in the HR department, you ask them, tell me about your day. Tell me about your job functionality. What processes do you do? And you can actually build your teams and things off of it from that perspective as well. Oh. Um, I Right now with a partner, I'm actually doing internal mapping. So we're doing a whiteboarding session. Here's my whiteboarding session. This mm -hmm. is marketing. We know we're going to need a general tab because general's there no matter what. We're doing social marketing, newsletters, campaigns, and conference and events as our channels. Now it's important to note, when you go over 10 channels, you're losing purpose. I'm on a team in Ingram that has 48 channels and I don't even look at it. Yeah, it's true, right? When I first joined, I was like, what the heck's going on here, right? And so we want to make sure we're keeping it concise. Another tip I'll give you as well is if it's a short term project, just do a chat and pin it because you can do everything in chat that you can do on a team. And so those are some quick, easy ways to improve. Yeah, fantastic. All right. Well, thank you very much, Abby. Um, it was a great presentation. Thank you. You're welcome. Down here on the help section, this is where the training is, what's yeah. new, and the topics. Fantastic. All right. Thanks so All much right. for having me. I appreciate it. It was fun. Thank you for staying up so late, too, You're at welcome. the end of your day. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, okay, so next uh, we're going to talk about the team certified devices business within uh, Ingram Micro and Ishay Lali is here with me in Sydney. He's the market development manager for Microsoft Teams certified devices at Ingram Micro Technology Solutions. Uh, Ishad has worked for Logitech and uh, Polycom in the past, I think they're now called Poly, uh, and has a wealth experience in Teams devices and helps our partners build out their Teams meeting rooms for their clients. So. Uh, it's over to you, Ashad. Thank you, George. Hi, guys. Hi, how's everyone today? So, um, uh, so that was a quick intro from George. So um, today we will be talking about um, Microsoft Teams Rooms devices. So now, as Abby sort of highlighted, the whole ecosystem of Microsoft Teams, uh, which is the dashboard into the whole digital transformation. Now we'll be talking about um, the communication side of things. So moving forward. I mean, as we talk, always talk about the changing modern workplace, I mean, this slide was before the pandemic, you know, so we were already gearing up for that area, but it's pretty much, you can see it's, it's still there. And now you can say it's fast forwarded by another five years, you know, with all the current pandemic. So, you know, 80% of the employees time is spending collaborating. So, you know, you know, meeting is a meeting, but if you do the meeting like in a, in a, in an effective and efficient way, then obviously it's got results, right? So, and then also, you know, we have two times more people using Teams like since five years ago. And the, la the last one I'd like to talk about is 15% of the meeting rooms are equipped with video, even as video room becomes the norm, right? So uh, uh, so obviously you can see, um, if when you talk to your clients, there's a, if there's a, a, a room, a huddle space, and it's got a screen, um, and they use the HDMI cable with the laptop, hey, there's a, there's a room for a candidate for a, a meeting room. Um, so moving forward, um, you know, as the CEO of Microsoft said, <coughs> you know, this in the in the two months we had two years of digital transformation. So obviously, you know, uh, we're looking at Microsoft Teams. The objective is for Microsoft Teams is to create a resilient, inclusive, and hybrid workplace. So we can see um, remote work has demonstrated a variety of benefits, right? So uh, flexible hours, like people working from home, um, as we have been doing probably for the last twelve months. 
Um, but I think it's safe to say, right? I mean, obviously now the future of work is going to be um, going to be a blend of remote work and also physical offices, and gives it increased increased flexibility um, and choice with greater focus on quality and inclu inclusion. So that's the future of workplace, you know, which is hybrid, as we say. Um, now bridging the gap, right? So we have people working from home, people working from the cafe, people working from the office. You know, joining a meeting as a remote user can sometimes make you feel as an outsider. You know, like um, like looking like outside and like you are not part of the meeting. Um, so whereas the objective is to bring inclusiveness. So everyone is like in the same meeting. And most common systems are designed primarily around the uh, in-room participant in mind. So that's the way I'm sort of heading towards that. So with so many of us working from home, we are we all become so much aware of this and essentially meeting the same virtual. So our experiences are very similar as, as we are returning back to the office in our customer framework. How do you maintain that feeling of meeting experience and how can we stay connected and collaborative across the various work workplaces? So it, of course, now sort of, uh, heading towards that answer is uh, Microsoft Teams devices, right? So that's where we're heading towards. Um, also, um, we're looking at the, uh, the shared places. So obviously, it's become people-centric meeting experience. In our remember like, like 10, 15 years ago, if you're on the road and you have to go to a meeting, you didn't have the capability of having an app going into a meeting. It's a whole, give me 10 minutes, I'll be in the office. But now you can be anywhere, still you can connect in the meeting. You know? So everything's, everything's roving or rotating around the, the people, where they are, and, and then but still the meeting experience is there. So, um, so Microsoft has created three guiding, um, three guiding uh, what we call principles uh, to move forward for Microsoft Teams systems. First, meeting should be inclusive and interactive for all the participants. Um, and and secondly, uh, the meeting need to go beyond just the structured communication. Right? It's not only like video or mobile. It has to go beyond the structured communication. They need to be a place where people can learn, can lead, in active participate, and see and hear each other and have open discussion. And if they were like sitting together, they collaborate and isolate as a team. And finally, you know, so uh, in this slide, uh, the, the, the room need to be friction free, making it easy to join. You know, if you remember the video conferencing days, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, what do you call the challenges were um, getting to the system. It was not connected to the, the mainstreams and island of a system. Um, and also um, firewall and security was all these issues that was there. But now, and bandwidth was another issue, right? You get video. So now that's the thing with the past and moving forward, that's all very simplified from, from Microsoft, right? So moving forward. So, you know, Microsoft, you know, provides a choice and facility of, um, you know, flexibility to meet the needs of uh, every modern workplace. So today we're focusing more on the Microsoft Teams room area. But if you look at the personal workplace, mobile, um, you have all these personal devices that we use on a daily basis. And then also we have the shared devices, so, so the conference room phone, for, you know, the, the triangle phone, you know, this to be in the middle, and, and then now we have Microsoft Teams rooms. So that's where uh, we'll be talking more about that. And, you know, um, it gives you, um, you know, the underlaying the foundations, Windows 10, Microsoft Teams, you know, the AI, Cortana, so everything's the underlying foundation of that. So, so a lot of work being done to come to this level. <laughs> and when we hear Microsoft certified device, we see this logo here and there. What does it mean? It means that the vendors like the lodges and police, they have gone to a, a, a strict high quality test, skin deep integration to make sure everything works fine. So it gives you the better experience. Cool. So now we'll be introducing the Microsoft Teams rooms. What is Microsoft Teams rooms? So, you know, the, the objective is like we want to work like you went one place in one room with Microsoft Teams rooms. So bringing the Microsoft Teams experience to every meeting meaning from anywhere, it can be the road, it can be the car, it can be the cafe. So what's happening is we firstly transform the meeting rooms with Teams. So it means like you have the same Teams feature set. So obviously like when we're using a laptop, you know, you know where to connect, share and stuff, all the, the features are there. We're in the boardroom, uh, we're in a mobile, so pretty much the same features are there. So it's, it's a common feature across where it brings you the simplicity, right? And then also want us to join, you know, not, not those days, you know, looking for a number, what's the IP address, what's the E164 number, you know, those days, you know, it's all touch, you know, and, you know, it's like making a phone call, right? So, and then secondly, make any place a Teams meeting place, 
So um, anyone, anywhere, any device, you know, pretty much. So dedicated Teams meeting app. So obviously we have the, the as, as Amy just mentioned about the whole whole ecosystem of uh, the chat. So in meetings, there is you know, the three three elements. There is before meeting, during meeting, and after meeting. You know, so for instance, like George just created a meeting, and then he added like ten people, and and then in the same meeting, he he, he, he published slides and said, hey, these are slides, and these are the discussion points. And what happens is we look before the meeting, prepare ourselves, then we go to the meeting, the same meeting that can transform into a meeting room, Teams meeting room, and then we do the collaboration, and then after meeting, still we can work on it. So happens those days of you know writing books and everything's in one place, you know, and becomes more efficient and and, and sufficient to access our information. Um, so obviously, um, you know, we can scale to any size of room, and also at the same time adding the HD voice and video in the in the rooms. And the other part is easy to deploy and simple to manage. So, you know, obviously we've got the Windows 10 device, so we're pretty much aware of the Windows 10 devices um, in the application platform. Uh, sorry. And then also for the universal app, right, which is the, the Microsoft Teams. And then also there's low training effort, you know, so very intuitive. Once you have used the thing on the laptop, you can use it on the, on the Teams room. And finally, in this slide, we can connect with hardware and software. You know, so obviously when you walk in the room, you have a, uh, like a, a touch control in the center of the room and all you do is just, it's already connected to Active Directory, all the meetings are there, bang, you're in the meeting, right? So, and it connects to all the displays and speakers in the room. I'll talk more about the displays and the other Active Directory and the slides. And then you add the HD experience in the, in the mix. So now, spaces and consideration. I mean, we work from home, we have our own office space, but now we'll be talking more about the, the meeting rooms. So not all rooms are equal. You know, as we look at the rooms, you can see there's rooms made, you know, with full of glass, there's rooms with, you know, in a corner. You know, so obviously what Microsoft has done, sort of um, simplified the whole process and made things easy. It's done the thinking and the hard lifting. And said, hey guys, right, let's start with small. So they can have a meeting which is called a huddle or small or focus room, you can say, uh, where obviously we have that size of room. And then obviously they need to consider camera, microphone and stuff. And then you have the small to medium sized room, and then you have the large room. If you remember those days, I remember 10 years ago, we, you know, someone says, hey, you need to do video conferencing, then we have to make sure we pick the right uh, Dulex or Wattle paint, making sure the paint was called Betty Blue, right? So making that room is Betty Blue color. You know, the cameras were not that advanced at that time, so you're making sure you had to put the camera in different places and more closer and stuff, you know, and then obviously the field of view of the camera. And, uh, you know, so obviously now we can see we've come a long way. But still, you have to consider this thing for best experience. Uh, but most of the technology now, as you can see, is adapting around the environment. So I'll go further. So obviously, then we have other places, like we have the multi-purpose uh, rooms, you know, on the left-hand side there. So, and then also with executive rooms. So this, uh, when we talk to our clients, uh, to our customers, it's so easy, it's so low-hanging fruit. You know, we're leaving the money on the table, you know, this, everyone's ready, so such a, fertile uh, land out there. We just have to start doing the conversation. And all this consideration will be all like, you know, the camera, microarray and stuff, it will, it will all flow in place. I'm mean, always saying the slides anyway, so, you know, we can even talk more. There's call to action, other stuff that will be helping you, you guys build the practice. And then consideration when um, looking at the space, obviously, you know, when you talk to clients, you have the size, then the furniture, the materials, the light and the sound. You know, so obviously, making sure what, you know, how many microphones you have to have in the room, making the lights like daylight, you know, being a bad experience, sound with acoustic paneling, you know, sometimes we have this paneling. Uh, if it's full blast, then that can be an issue. Uh, but then still that technology manages, but still for the bad experience is to have acoustic paneling in the, in the room. Are we having a round table, a new table, you know, and making sure where the cameras are going to do. Um, anyway, all this stuff is all explained here. Share that on that. It is amazing how yep. much uh, some companies will spend on their meeting yep. room. Yep. It seems almost like it's, uh, yep. you know, the, the budget's quite open for them to yep. invest heavily in having a quality meeting room experience. Yep. They may penny pinch on everything else, but yep. their boardroom or their main meeting room is really important. Yep, yep. And also now, pretty much like what we're helping you to do from Ingram is build a practice. Like you will be talking about experts, right? You know, the small, medium, large, right? That's it. Nothing more out of the norm. You know, so obviously with the size of the room, <coughs> number of participants say five, eight, <coughs> over that. And then obviously then we can, I mean, position the right devices for that room and then 
quite a number of microphones and speakers in the room. So now you, we are bringing you the, you can say, AV practice to you in house. <coughs> because now we're taking away, not taking the business from the AV guys, but we are making, making our partners more self-sufficient where they can focus on, you know, you know as, as Andy said, the workflow is there. You know, go through the whole workflow. And video plays a very important component in that workflow. You know, so obviously that's where, you know, obviously look at the bigger picture and that's where we help you guys build the practice. So anyway, moving forward, uh, teams from devices, looking at the form factor and the components. Um, there's four elements to consider for a successful video call. Now, when you have a video call, you, I'm like we having, it's a video call now we're having, you know, these are the first, first factor we have to consider the voice. When you look at the voice in a video conferencing, it's the two elements bringing the voice. The one is the speaker that we have in the room that we can hear, and the other one is the microphone that actually captures your, your voice. So this has to be like happening well. So that's why we have, have these devices that actually does that well. And then finally, and secondly, we have video. So video, which is the two parts, which is the, the camera that captures the, the video. So which is now like as George and I are sitting here, we have a Logitech camera in front of us. That's got a feel of your 120 degrees. We can zoom in and out, you know, and so we see that's the camera. And then also then we have a screen, a monitor in front of us that is giving us video from the far end. So now this is the, the two areas that actually make sure that we have this experience that we get in the camera capture and the monitors there. And thirdly is the content sharing. So now as I'm sharing my content, is of use very, you know, wirelessly. I have no cables connected. You know, you can even have cable if you want. Um, and obviously then we are sharing the content. So pretty much it brings the experience like I'm sitting in my boardroom sharing content like with George and I'm sharing content with, you know, the guys out there. So bring the, the, the seamless experience. And then the last one is the, the one, uh, one touch dial. So with a touch control, remember those remote controls you had before? You know, if you put the wrong IP address, then it goes the wrong place or it doesn't even work. But touch controls bringing, brought that experience where you have everything showing what meeting is going to start, where you're going to connect, one touch to dial. So these are the, the elements that we consider for a successful goal. So when we have this in our mind and we talk about this to the customer, and that's where we then we bring in the, the devices, right? So, so, you know, so some of the devices we have is, let's say, the cameras. So we have, say, Yelling and Logitech. So we have different cameras, different field of view. Uh, we can uh, mount the cameras upside down, depending on the, on the, on the application. Um, so that's the, the camera, which is capturing the video element. And then, then we have uh, this display. So we have like BenQ, Samsung system. So we, we have, at Ingram, we actually have all those that we can sell. You know, I will, Mentioned more. It's quite exciting, you know. I, if I was a partner, I would never leave this opportunity. You know, I'll talk more about it later on. So these are the, the, the video from the camera side. And then, then we have the touch controller we've talked about. So we have these four vendors that we work with: uh, Lenovo, Logitech, Yearlink, and HP. So they actually pretty much you can see the, uh, the look and feel like uh, it's all like pretty much similar, you know, Windows experience. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're different vendors and they have different applications. That's why at, at Ingram we have the, the best of breed, best of breed technology that we're using to bring to our partners. And then the audio, so obviously audio, uh, so the audio is the speakers. So now we have a speaker that we can hear people in the conference. At the same time, we have microphones that actually can capture. If you look at the camera in the middle, we have the similar camera, which is the, um, this camera here is the, the Logitech camera. Um, it actually has got built-in microphone. So obviously when you guys are selling um, and positioning to the customer, you just take this device uh, with a compute and pretty much, you know, you don't need the microphones because it's a small room that will be catering for that. But then obviously if you look at Yale and the other stuff, you have like a wireless soundbar, you have the microphones, wireless microphones. These are different, different options that you can provide. Cool. So how can Ingram Micro help to build your Microsoft Teams practice? So obviously, you know, at Micro, at, um, at Ingram Micro, we have the comprehensive Microsoft Team room bundles. So what we have done with the product manager, we have done the product engineering and make sure we put all the things in the bundle and makes it easy for you to sell, sell to the small, medium and large rooms. Then we have the onboarding and enablement program, which I run, which obviously I help my partners to onboard the sales and technical teams. And then also we have professional services, even though you don't have any professional services um, uh, um, uh, practice. Um, we can actually you can utilize our, our our services, which I'll actually mention about more services. What other the, the services we do? Later slides. Cool. 
So actually, I can be very proud to say, you know, out of all the, the listed in Australia, we actually the we, we hold the most comprehensive Microsoft Teams device bundles to market. These are some of the names, you know, like I just put on the site, but there's many more. So you look at the small and huddle room, we come here and say, hey guys, Logitech tab, we meet up camera, and, and this is the NAC. So these are the three components, right? So the touch panel, the camera, and also the compute, which is runs Windows 10. And then obviously there's all the other Logi, Yelling, then you go to the medium room, then you have that, those devices. Then at the bottom you go to Yelling MP500, for instance, it's got wireless microphone. And then you go to the large room, then we can actually have, you know, many cameras, um, obviously to, to use for application, education type, no, so not education type of environment needs three, four cameras. And that's where we can actually help you in that. So you can customize based on the yeah. requirements. Yeah, yeah. Right. And it's it's quite um, um, quite straightforward. You know, you have this bundle, and this is for this room. Okay. In no time, uh, our partners can be you know um, can be master this and start selling. You know, in, in no time because it's a small, medium, large room. That's it. Nothing more to sell out of that. So partners have a choice of building their own practice with our yeah. support, or yes. they can use our professional services to yeah. deliver this. Yeah. And also because the, the, the products, they still have to go to DST. So therefore, what we make things easy for our partners, that you bundled it and all you do is you just sell. And then if you if you you can use our services and you can share our services to build your services at the same time. So at, at the end of the day, we don't compete with our professional services with our partners. Okay. okay. And then we have the, the Yelling video device solutions. So obviously you can see across the spectrum. As I said, small, medium, and large rooms, we have all these different models of, um, I mean, obviously, um, you know, we can talk more about that in, in depth, but then you have the Windows platform and the Android platform. Now, these are different devices and, and different sizes of rooms. And then also we have the, the Logi. So pretty much Logi, uh, have a simplified version portfolio, small, medium, large. You can have those cameras. You can have this, uh, the NAC, which is the compute, across to the, the medium and the large. So same story I'm saying again, but the same devices, different vendors, but different, uh, you know, different uh, capabilities. And then also we have PC based, so we use all the Lenovo, HP, Intel, Dell technologies as, as, as a PC moving forward. So you can see yeah, most of the cameras, which is a rally bar, it has the AI camera now. So that's going to the next level, which does all the intelligence. And then also um, under, under the bottom, as you see, under the bundles, we have the HP Slice. So most of the AV guys, they love this, they use it for the integration of the room. What we have done, we've integrated with the cameras for you, you know, so that's and then also we have the center of the room control and which is Microsoft Teams um, friendly. And then um, we have the, the Think Smart Hub, which is from Lenovo. Sleep device in the center, that's the compute. One cable, you know, goes to the TV and the compute and, and then you got the system running. And then you have the camera, which is another camera from uh, Lenovo, which is a, like AI camera. Um, so just to further talk on that. So, so what our partners can do, they can build and manage services around these devices. You know, so this is like um, a Think Smart Manager is a uh, is a is a, a cloud-based uh, management one one pane of glass where you can actually uh, monitor cameras, you can monitor your your uh, your cameras and your your what do you call uh, compute, and then all the features and stuff. So pretty much you can do all that on the fly, and which obviously uh, preventive and maintenance can be for the customer. Okay, uh, the journey: how to build your printing practice using the uh, Ingram Micro ecosystem. Onboarding, sales and technical training. So we have like solutions, BDM, marketing manager, uh, marketing development like myself. We have a lot of people to help you on the journey. You know, so obviously, and then also then we have the demo solution bundles, that which the, 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 the ones we talked about, and quotation. These are like all, we have all the guys doing quotation. We have so much people for you. You know, it only looks like a, a telephone number or an email address, but so much activity is happening in the background for you guys. So, and so proactive, you know, if you work with us. Then the process services, we have the solution architect project managers and installers. So these are, and, and also not forgetting the Ingram Cloud, you know, even though we sell the devices, hey, you know, licensing, you can sell the licensing also, uh, the rooms license. And also then actually that opens another angle, as and you're saying, then you can start focusing on the other practices that you build. So you can start from that side to this side, or this side to the other side, right? So, mm -hmm. um, and then these are process services, project management, room readiness, you know, room integration, uh, onboarding services. It's like every room is different, as you say. And then, in a nutshell, um, so best of breed, Logitech, Lenovo, HP, and Legendi, we're doing for the devices. And then also, um, I'll share the slides anyway. 
Uh, so, Mr. Links, um, just yesterday was announced that you know, we're having a Microsoft Teams room sales and technical partner bootcamp. Um, obviously, good timing to register where there's some, you can have access to the MS700 exam. Uh, it's like Eric was saying, it's good to do the exam to understand the whole ecosystem. And also, sales and training, uh, Teams, Hub, uh, Android devices. So, pretty much the link is there. Um, guys, you know, get onto it. You don't spend any penny, you know, obviously, and you get vouchers for that before if you do the exam before June 30. Uh, and then also, another thing, we have a Yama community. This is all the experts of Microsoft Teams are there, right? You know, so what we do is you, you post a question in less than an hour or less than two hours, you get an answer. So, so much help, so much help out there. You know, you're not alone, right? So we're all working together. And then call to action. So I pretty much, you know, um, suggest, um, engage or so engage with the guys, you know, first, you know, um, the bootcamp guys register for that. Onboarding program, you know, um, contact me um, and George, we can actually start helping you onboarding. And also we, every month I'll be running technical roundtable for, for vendors to understand the, the deeper side of the technology. And demo, as we say, to see and feel, the seeing is building. Um, so, you know, we have, a, if in Sydney, we have the kit here and uh, all the demo stuff here in Sydney. Um, or also we can do online and also we have access to if you have a high profile customers you want to do demo with, we can take them to the macro center. Cool. So that's uh, in a nutshell. Um, that was, um, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, we, we're just on time. So um, I'd like to uh, thank you all for attending. Uh, we continue this series of webinars and the next one will be held uh, next Wednesday at the same time where we'll be discussing Teams Adoption Services and the third series, third in the series is around Teams calling and recording. Um, just a reminder that the uh, recording of this webinar will be available soon as well as uh, the slide decks. Um, thank you for attending and have a great day. Thank you guys.